Hey, what's up guys? Stay patient here with this week's trophy update. Now, we don't actually have many games to get through this week, which is a nice change, but the games we do have do represent at least several easy platinums, or at least games that I'm assuming are going to be easy. So there are some key titles here for trophy hunters. Now, first off, we're just going to come back to a game we spoke about last week, which was Bricks. This was the sort of paddle game where you have to knock a ball against Bricks to to break them, you know, like typical old school games, there's hundreds of them by now, aren't there? But uh, this does look to be a relatively easy platinum. If we put the trophies in order of their completion on PSM profiles, you'll see that the platinum has uh, almost 40% uh, and on PSN it's 16%, that's quite high. Then the rarest trophy is the one we spoke about last week. I think there was a few people that had played it last week, but uh, not enough to really get any kind of percentage. But you'll see here that the one we did mention before scored 50,000 points in level, that is the rarest, but it's still 40% on this website and 18 or ne nearly 19% on PSN. So this definitely looks like a fair option for any sort of platinum chasers, anyone trying to you know, find some quick, easy platinums. Let's have a look at the completion time. Looks to be around sort of four or five hours or so if you are playing it non-stop. Obviously, anyone who's taken longer probably took a lot of breaks during their play sessions or maybe played it over a few days. But yeah, this definitely looks like a viable option. Now, like I said, we do have several potential easy platinums that have been added to the site this week. Uh, the first one is Late Shift. Now, we're going to check out a trailer for this. Now this might not uh, sort of mean very much as we watch it with no sound on, but this is another live action game. It's from the same publishers as The Bunker. So it's that kind of game where you're basically just making choices as a movie plays out. And as you can see, it's all real life uh, recordings and it looks a bit more ambitious than the previous one. It looks like they're using a lot more, you know, a lot more variety when it comes to settings. Um, it's not just all based in one building, you know, I think they probably made enough money off the bunker that they've been able to kind of branch out a bit. And it does look kind of cool. I mean, obviously, a lot of people say, oh, it's not, not, not a game, you know, it's a movie, but that's fine. You know, we watch movies, we play games, so why not have something that's a mixture of the two? And often when you're watching a movie, you kind of want to decide what characters to, you get annoyed because they've made certain choices. So it's quite nice being able to kind of... Uh, you know, have a say in how things play out. I've read that there are quite a lot of endings. I forget exactly how many, but uh, I think the trophies are probably going to relate to seeing all of the choices play out. So I think it's probably going to be a very easy platinum. There's not going to be much skill here. As you watch the gameplay, there isn't any sections where you get the impression you're actually in direct control. Like even when it comes to QTEs, I think that would be a bit too much for them to handle at this point. I think maybe in the future, the live action games might be able to have QTEs. But for now, it's literally just a case of watching a section, watching a, a bit of footage, and then being given a choice while the footage is sort of pretty much paused in place. And then, you know, a bit like the bunker, then the kind of whichever choice you make, it plays the next video based on that choice. So I think, you know, it's... it's almost guaranteed to be an unbelievably easy platinum once you know which decisions are needed to be able to get each trophy and you'll probably earn it naturally to be honest if you go through the game and you try and sort of see every eventuality make every decision as you play through and you'll probably have to play it through a bunch of times but uh yeah i think even if you go um sorry even if you go in without a guide i think it's probably going to be a dead easy plat uh, we've got some people playing it here. We do have a Platinum Achiever. I haven't looked at the completion time yet, uh, but he took eight hours. Now, obviously, he's the first person to earn it, so he didn't know what was required. So that's pretty good. He's done that in one day without any guide, without any sort of uh, any information online to be able to go off of. So that's pretty cool. I don't know if maybe it's got guides from previous versions, but I think... You know, I think it's launching on PS4 for the first time. I don't think it's been on any other platforms. If it is the kind of game that does require a guide, then I probably will put one together myself. And um, we're going to scan through quickly. I kind of don't want to look too carefully at the trophy names. I just want to see if there's any that relate to collectibles. Oh, seven endings. Okay, watch all seven endings. So is that the rarest trophy? I know there's only a few people playing it, but if we put them in order... 
In fact, do it in order of PSN because anyone playing this is probably going to be naturally popping trophies. Yeah, watch all seven endings. So it might be a case of, you know, doing that trophy earns all the others. But, uh, oh, find all main chapters. So some chapters aren't played, you know, and if you go through certain routes or whatever. Um, yeah, it doesn't look like there are any collectible trophies, which is kind of cool. But we do have some miscellaneous things entering the wrong code and stuff. I think they're probably all just choices. Uh, so yeah, I mean, that's going to be dead easy, isn't it, guys? There's no way there's going to be any difficulty related to that. So let's check out the other few that have been added today. Um, we've got Bandit 6 Combined Arms. I couldn't actually find a trailer for this, but this is a VR game. It's like a flight uh, combat game. You know, you're flying in a plane, shooting down other planes. Uh, looks fairly basic. Like I say, I couldn't actually find any videos related to it, so it's obviously not a big game. Uh, but, you know, another VR game, and it does have a plat, that's the main thing that stands out to me. Another VR game with a plat, which is quite a rare occurrence. We have Zero Escape, 9 Hours, 9 Persons, 9 Doors. Now, this is part of the Nonary Games uh, re-release. You know, we had, I'm not sure if it's out yet, but we either already had or are going to have a collection of Zero Escape, Virtue's Last Reward, and 999. But this is the Japanese version of just 999, I believe. If we look at the picture here, I don't... Th oh, no, maybe it is... Uh... Yeah, oh, okay, maybe this is the double pack. Maybe this is the non games, but they've named it after the two games that are included. Because you've got here nine... I'm guessing this is, uh, you know, nine hours, nine, nine persons, nine doors. And then the rest of it is probably the name of... Uh, what is it? Virtue Slash Reward, the other game from the collection. So I'm guessing this is just a stacking list for it. So that's kind of cool, you might want to replay it if you can get hold of the Japanese version. I think it's like Danganronpa in the sense that the Vita versions had a tro trophy set for each game, although 999 wasn't on Vita, but Virtue's Last Reward has had its own platinum. But I think the double pack just has one platinum between the two games, so it's going to take twice as long. Let's double check here, we've got the nonary games, uh, we've got... 999 base trophies, and then VLR, Virtue's Last Reward, okay. So yeah, both Danganronpa and the Zero Escape collection just have one shared platinum across both games, which is a shame because Danganronpa especially is very long. It's going to take you probably 100 hours to get both plats or to, or to get, you know, finish both games and get the one plat, I should say. And uh, Zero Escape, you could fly through that, but I don't recommend it. The story is really good and that's going to take a while if you read every bit of dialogue. We have another easy, what I'm assuming is a Japanese visual novel here for, oh, it's for PS4 and Vita. 95% any game that's that high is generally either one of the arcade games or a visual novel. I'm pretty sure that's one of the novels there. Uh, we do have Albedo, Eyes from Outer Space, a Japanese version. We're pretty sure this is Japanese. Yes, I've just come across to PlacingTrophies.org. Here we are, the third version. So we've got Europe, North America and Japan. So you can triple up on this Platinum now if you really want to. It's a terrible game, so good luck to you if you want to play it three times. I probably will give in at some point and play a third time just because, uh, you know, I've made the guide and it's nice and quick to get through. I'll probably follow my, my own guide, to be honest. Uh, but yeah, you, you can get through that in an hour. There is a guide on my channel. So if you are one of those people that does own a Japanese account as well and you want to go ahead and, and buy the game again, <laughs> if you want to put yourself uh, through that pain one last time. <laughs> Um, like I say, there's a guide on the channel. What have we got here? Uh, the Silver Case HD. Now, we're not going to watch a trailer for this because it's such a weird trailer. It doesn't really show anything. It just shows up pictures of the characters in the game and shows their names on screen. And I'm not sure if the names are the people who play the voices for them or the people who, you, you know, the characters themselves. But I get the impression maybe there are some famous Japanese voice actors in it because, like, the whole trailer, I mean, there's one that's... I think two minutes long and all it is is like flashes of images with names of people and it's like well are they trying to show off the voice actors or what but either way it does look kind of interesting um it's another choice based game it's like a mystery you're trying to solve i think uh you're solving murders there's two routes you can go through in fact i've got the wikipedia page open here um the gameplay section here because i really couldn't tell what the gameplay was from the trailer it says the silver case is text-based point-and-click adventure visual novel video game where players take control of different characters through two linear scenarios. 
Um, in the transmitter scenario, uh, players take the role of a detective solving a serial murder mystery, while in the placebo scenario, they control a freelance journalist covering the investigation. Now, it's first person, I think. Um, yeah, the player moves through environments in first person, proceeding through the uh, scenario story events play out in special windows against a single background. It's almost like a comic, I guess. Some are dedicated to text, while others show scenery related to events in the game. These scenery are a combination of 2D and 3D artwork. Uh, quiz questions are shown for the player to answer. Um, short live action sequences. Okay, so it's basically a murder mystery. You're playing two different characters. And I think it looks kind of interesting. From the small amount I've read and the small amount I've seen, it looks like it might be an interesting game. I mean, there was that game... Oh, I forget uh, her story. That was it. I don't know if any of you guys played it. It's on like, um, you can play it on iPad or, you know, iOS or PC or whatever. Her story is literally just a load of recorded sections of an interview with a woman. And you search, you're searching a database. You use like a single word or a phrase or whatever. And it will sort of find any clip containing that phrase or that word. So these interviews, obviously, they're like police interviews in a police... Uh, interrogation room or whatever and you don't know what's going on you start off with I think they give you a suggested word and you search for that and you watch like one video and it doesn't really give anything away but you try and sort of fill in all the blanks by watching the whole interview and try and figure out who she is what's happened who did it it's really interesting and although it's very simple which I get the impression the silver case will be it's really interesting just for the sake of the story so I think this could be Quite an intriguing game. We also have Full Throttle Remastered here. This is one of Tim Schafer's games, so from Double Fine Productions. Uh, these are the guys that did Day of the Tentacle and Grim Fandango and a lot of the old school point and click adventures that have been remastered for PS4. And for the most part, they have nice, easy, fairly quick platinums. Obviously, some of them are quicker than others, but I get the impression this is probably going to be a reasonably quick one. I don't remember playing it, I think I did at some point. But I know that The Mind is a City, who does a lot of the text guides that I follow for my videos, uh, she did message me months ago and said that this is coming out and she's looking forward to doing a guide for it. I think she's even sort of pretty much got a guide written out just from memory because she's probably still got the game on the original version. She didn't know what the trophies were going to be, but I think she's going to fill in all the missable trophies later. So once this game comes out, there should be a guide available fairly quickly thanks to her. But uh, yeah, this is definitely going to be another easy one. It has to be. I don't think it's going to be anything tough here. It's going to be very much along the lines of Day of the Tentacle. In fact, you know what? I'm going to see if any memories trigger when we watch the trailer because although there's no sound, it's going to be very much story-based, isn't it? Um, it'd be interesting just to see the visual style and see if I do remember anything from this because there's so many games back on like PS1 and PS2 that I just I don't remember if I ever played, you know? Um, I probably did at some point, but uh, yeah, let's just check this out. Some of you guys might have some sort of nostalgic memories trigger from some of these scenes. You can definitely tell it's from the same developer and the same sort of era as Day of the Tentacle. The graphics, you know, definitely have a lot in common. <laughs> it looks a bit darker. Yeah, it looks like a much more kind of mature a mature game compared to some of the others. I mean, they're all kind of kind of grown up with some of their content that they cover. A lot of the humor is quite uh, quite advanced, you know, the kind of stuff that only adults are going to find funny. Yeah, okay, it looks cool. Now, I don't actually remember anything from it, so it might be one of the games that I didn't actually play originally. Uh, we have Super Beat Zonic. This is a, uh, what do you call it, a rhythm action game, you know, a music based game. It looks quite different. We're not going to watch the trailer because without the music it won't really make any sense. But it looks actually, you know what, we will watch the trailer. Simply because it kind of uh, shows you the weird control scheme. This looks quite different to any other rhythm action game that I've played and it looks quite difficult as well. Obviously you'll have to just imagine the music playing in the background, but uh, the way it's structured, the way the controls and the mechanics are structured, 
looks quite interesting. I think we're going to have to fast forward a bit because it's just showing all the, uh, the tracks that are available. But as you can see, all I can think is that maybe you're using the analog sticks and every time one hits one of the sides, you have to kind of line it up with the analog stick. And it actually, like that red line there, uh, looks like maybe you have to use it and then kind of turn your analog stick as the line progresses. Now it actually looks quite difficult. If that is the case, uh, you have to be quite precise with it. There are three different sections, so you're not just pointing to the right or left, you're pointing in a specific direction. I don't actually know for sure that this is how it controls, but it looks to be, it's all I could really think. I might be completely off base, and if anyone's played this and they do know how it controls, then let us know. But uh, yeah, it looks, it looks interesting. It looks very tough if you ask me but I suppose it depends on how experienced you are with rhythm games. Finally, we have Guardians of the Galaxy. This is the next Telltale game. These are being pumped out to like nobody's business. Obviously, it's going to be a while till the Platinum's available. This must be the release date of uh, the first episode. So that's Tuesday this week. It will be tomorrow by the time most of you are watching this. Uh, but yeah, obviously, this is going to be another easy plat. Um, we've got just all the usual trophies, completing all the episodes of each chapter. No missable trophies there at all. So yet another easy plat, probably around 10 hours, I would imagine. Uh, so yeah, we do have quite a few promising easy platinums, but not really anything that represents a particularly interesting release. Obviously, the Telltale games can be fun, but there's no big AAA games this week. Uh, there are some maybe interesting you know digital releases some interesting games that might have uh, uh, intriguing storylines basically so we've got things like the silver case and uh, late shift but for the most part you know this is just a list of games that i think is going to re represent some new easy plats for ps4 so late shift albedo the japanese version uh, the Silver Case we mentioned as well, Full Throttle, and Guardians of the Galaxy. Quite a few there, guys, so this could be a busy week. But uh, that's pretty much everything we're going to cover. It's quite a quiet week, like I mentioned, guys. Uh, not a lot to talk about, but uh, thanks very much for watching anyway. And have a great weekend. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you soon. Cheers.